the criteria for the autism, ASD, eligibility has to do with the diagnosis and also the level of substantial disabling conditions, sort of the adaptive skills. So not everyone with ASD would automatically be eligible for regional center, but if they do have um, you know, areas where they need support, um, such as in uh, self-care, language, expressive and receptive, learning, mobility, self-direction, capacity for independent living, and economic self-sufficiency. And um, this agency, the Regional Center, is the product of legislation that was passed many years ago um, in 1969. It was a result of the grass, a grassroots movement for people, uh, families, that had individuals with developmental disabilities. And at the time, they were typically referred to as mental retardation, um, autism, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, and then some legal writers added in in similar, in similar conditions. Um, so we started out serving more of the population with intellectual disability, which is our preference these days. And um, as the population of autism grew, um, that became a new focus um, for our services as well um, because we wanted to address and know that there are differences and challenges and ways to approach um, life with someone with um, an autism spectrum disorder. So our services are voluntary. They are totally funded by a contract with the state of California the legislation mandates that the state of California has a responsibility for individuals with a developmental disability, which makes it an entitlement program. Um, there are no waiting list for eligibility. Anybody that meets the eligibility criteria is in. And um, there is also a process if you think you should be eligible and you're not deemed eligible, that you can appeal that. There's a um, fair hearing process. Um, so it also means that we as a re have a responsibility is to address people's needs and um, fulfill what, how to help them accomplish their goals. So um, that is what happens in case management. So after someone is made um, eligible, um, they are then assigned to a case manager. That's our terminology. Some people use program um, coordinator, some counselor, social worker. Our term is case manager. And really, Regional Center is a case management agency. And that's our function. And case management means service coordination development of a service plan, identifying needs, areas of support, and trying to come up with a plan in order to accomplish those goals and meet those needs. So the case manager um, is the person that meets with the individual and family, anyone that the individual wants to include, um, to develop the individual program plan the IPP. Everybody knows that if you're involved with Regional Center, you got an IPP. And um, it does um, specify once the team has decided on um, what supports are needed and what the goals are, we start with the goals, um, it will specify what services Regional Center will provide. If we don't identify it at that particular time, we can add it at any point. Um, there's features of the IPP that are very similar to an IEP, um, as far as you can always request um, to have it modified, reviewed, um, added to, take things taken away from. Um, so, uh, the services will be specified in the IPP and 
then we do our uh, check writing, so to speak, um, and pay the service providers that are going to support um, the development of your um, uh, skills. And that keeps the, the ball rolling. And one of our, you know, the principles of our service provision is that we review and try to monitor progress because there is an expectation that that service is, um, may you, enables someone to make reasonable progress toward their goals and that they are satisfied with the service provision. Um, I had somebody call me today and she's not happy with her independent living skills provider and she fired him. And that's her right. And um, we will identify a new one if she wants it. She told me that she was ILSing herself today. today. <laughs> that's when she, she's decided she's ready for that. So um, one of the other factors uh, for regional center service provision is that we are, we love this phrase, the payer of last resort. It sounds so dramatic. Um, but that means that we look around to find if the service is available in some other context so that if you're entitled to another service that is maybe government funded, that you access that. And we will help with advocacy for accessing those services. And um, in this case, one of the um, generic resources for uh, income is SSI, Social Security. And um, there are Medi-Cal goes along with that. So typically we do not fund medical services because most people have either Medi-Cal or their private health insurance. So that determines a little bit where we provide the services and, and which what we fund. I think that um, we have kind of a, a list of services and people want to look at the menu and they want to pick and choose from that menu of services. And what we feel works better is to assess the need first and kind of get to know people so that we can, in our role, is to be aware of services, how they work, what they do, what they don't do, and then we can match. Um, because sometimes if you just pick from a menu, you know, sometimes you, you really don't like the way they did those mashed potatoes. So we try to match it up. Um, that is a better, is a good fit. Uh, I think when, there's a lot of exciting things going on these days with, and you'll hear more about it, um, is opportunities for employment and how we are trying to facilitate that um, by um, the state of California and the federal government has released funds that will allow um, our job coaches to receive better funding and are the agencies that do job development. So that's um, pretty exciting. We're seeing a lot more happening um, these days. There is also a, um, a movement that we've, we call self-determination. And it's still in its planning stages. And um, what that is hoping to do is that we would kind of give you a budget and you figure out where you want to get your services. Um, it's, it's not quite as simple as that, but um, that's the starting place. And the reason that I mention it is because I think it can be very applicable for people um, on the spectrum and that the standard services that we offer don't always fit as um, the doctor said, and so that can expand some opportunities um, for a different type of funding. It's going to be put, we're still waiting for approval for our proposal that the state submitted to the federal government, and it will be a pilot program initially, um, and 
there's kind of going to be a lottery for people that are interested. So in the initial stages, but I would say if you wanted to, you know, keep your eyes on the future, that would be something that you would want to be aware of um, coming along. Let's see. I think one of the confusions sometimes, and I'm flipping back to eligibility, is that um, we do not serve people, it does, the eligibility criteria that was written into the law does not include people who have, who are, have a psychiatric disorder only, and or someone who has a learning disability only, or someone that has a physical disability only. So there does have to be the inclusion of um, one of the other diagnoses and um, significant, substantial, disabling conditions in the other life areas, life skill areas. And I think sometimes that gets confusing for people as they apply um, for services. Um, the process for eligibility is pretty easy. Um, the individual um, should call our intake department and say that they want to be considered and they'll get a packet in the mail that is kind of our application packet. It just gives some basic information about um, history and development and medical conditions and um, so that we have a starting place. And then once that's returned, um, a uh, assessment counselor will meet with the individual and family, anybody that wants to be involved, and um, kind of gather more information that can be useful to determine the eligibility criteria. A doctor and a psychologist have to make the determination for eligibility, and, um, and as soon as they do, it gets turned in um, and once eligibility is determined and they will be moved to the case management unit.